really understands, in my opinion, one of the hottest topics that is going on right now, influencer marketing. So before we do that though, and we bring in Amanda Russo with uh, Blogger Bay Productions, I just wanna say something, my little mic drop moment, I guess. Everyone's an influencer, because at the end of the day, you have a unique gift, you have a unique talent, you have something that is focused on helping the world see a perspective. Because here's the deal, my friends, we all have unique gifts and talents, okay? We all have things that are unique to us. We all have things that are marketable, believe it or not. There are people out there that are looking for what you have. That's what's kind of cool about this because at the end of the day, um, there's this misconception that like you have to be, there's one size that fits all. That is so not true. What I have to say is that there is a size that fits based on what you are about. Now, I'm going to go further on to this with um, our guest, Amanda Russo. Um, but I really want you to understand this because this is so applicable to anyone who's building a business or is working with a business and wants to be innovative. Because it is sometimes better to focus on a niche versus trying to go for the macro. You know, they, they say in, um, you know, commerce and other types of things that, you know, would you rather make $100 off 10 people versus one dollar off a thousand people now for traction yes the thousand people is cool because hey they can spread it out but if you are a premium niche product and you just have to focus on 10 people and they t they tell another 10 people you're going to be far more wealthier as an example even on a marketing standpoint almost every successful consumer brand that i have seen since forever started off with a very particular niche now i want to be clear i'm talking about the successful ones i'm not talking about every brand that's been out there but i'm saying that brands that started off for a specific target market target niche eventually built a groundswell they eventually built this loyal customer chip whatever you want to call it and then once they got that traction what they what they were doing as niche became the mainstream and then after that it actually became this big story i'm saying the same thing about you as an individual influencer that you might have a specific niche or gift out from a personal brand level or message that you're about. And you might not be doing this just to make money. You're doing this just to give back and share the world what you're about. It doesn't matter. You just be good at what you do and the universe will come and give you good things. I'm being serious. I have seen this time and time over again with individual niche influencers, individual brands that started off on a niche model and then they became big. Um, by the way, opposite can happen. Sometimes you launch a business and you might realize that, hey, we're doing too much in terms of reaching too many, trying to reach too many types of people. And then you might focus on a, a more focused niche. And the niche could be age, it can be a certain um, gender, it can be certain interest, it can be certain leo location, whatever it is. But um, that's fine too. And sometimes as that niche, you just keep building and building that niche because the niche just keeps getting better and better and bigger and bigger. Um, I really hope you all take this to heart because um, we talk about a lot of things on the show. We've had hundreds of guests. Um, we've probably hit over 500. I've done a tally um, in terms of conversations and interviews. And I have to say that, you know, there's certain lessons that we all can learn from, you know, the many mentors that we've had on this show. Um, but I will say, though, that you are an influencer. Don't focus on, you know, how many people you're reaching. Focus more on what kind of impact you're making. You know, I have a philosophy that, you know, if I can hit one person every day with impact, just one person, then I'm doing my job. I'm not focused on trying to reach, you know, X amount of people, although the show does get more than that than one person. My point is, though, if I can hit one person, I'm good. That's it. But that's the thing, because um, I'm focused on impact. And this is not about me. I'm just giving you an example. You know, um, another interesting thing that I kind of want to share along the lines about influencer marketing and why you are an influencer is... This is why your personal brand needs to be on fleek. This is why you need to spend time on it. It doesn't matter that you're an author or you're a CEO, you own some company. Um, thanks for joining, Oleg. It's more about what your gift is because when people see that authenticity about your gift, good things will come. I'll give you a great example, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself in the hot seat. I haven't really said this before, so um, I want you to you know judge me, rate me, or just hear the authenticity behind this, okay? So I have I have segued a lot of our episodes in the last six to nine months around 
probably one of my favorite topics, something that I've realized is my life purpose, which is mindfulness. Many of you know that mindfulness, which includes meditation, peak performance, um, you know, uh, meditation, peak performance, and mindfulness type of activities is, I just got so excited, I had to pause for a sec. All these types of things fall under mindfulness, okay? So in the last six to nine months, I've really doubled down on working with um, business owners and doing workshops. I've worked with sales teams and marketing teams and I have to tell you that I've done sales in my life for probably almost, you know, over close to 15 years, right? And, you know, what's interesting is that because um, you're always selling, whether you're a co-founder, or you are part of a team or you're um, head of marketing, it doesn't matter. You're always selling to someone. And so I understand the idea of selling and the hustle and all that. But when it comes to the mindfulness type of stuff, I'm not seeing the same kind of sales that I've had to do in the past. Now, people in some circles believe that I have some credibility, I have some experience or knowledge in whatever I sell. So they're like, okay, I'll work with you or I'll give you money or I'll collaborate, fine. But when it comes to mindfulness, it's like before I can even finish the sentence, people just got it. They're just like, yeah, no, that's your thing. Like your social, your your content, the people that, uh, you know, um, you know, see that, um, they, they just, they're just like, you got to do it. And by the way, Oleg put a really interesting uh, comment on the live. This is why I love the live nation here. What chance do you have to sell something if you can't first sell yourself? Absolutely agree. I am that confident on selling myself on understanding how mindfulness is something that's needed that people saw that. And you know what the great, the best barometer is? And this is something that, um, you know, you have to be really clear about when you're selling yourself as a personal brand or representing a business. You have to be vulnerable. Like, I have no issues telling you in the mindfulness side that like I went through some tough times and I tapped into mindfulness and it helped me and I realized that this gift needs to help others and so I subsequently did more media, did work, you know, interviewed Dr. Oz, which I should replay that interview in the next few weeks. Um, you know, people like Dave Meltzer, even Ryan Blair, some of these guests we've had on our show have been specifically because I was looking for more guidance on my own mindfulness journey and I knew if it was going to help me, it would help other people. But when I say all these things, I'm not showing you statistics or metrics. I'm not showing you my bio. I'm not showing you a lot of things. But oftentimes that is a good introduction for people to say, wow, like Ash gets mindfulness and he needs to do this. And so your personal brand or your influence or thing that you want to be an influencer in is you have to find that meditation or mindfulness thing for you. I'm not saying do mindfulness stuff. I'm saying find the thing that is so authentic to you where you can not only share